What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I have seven very specific fragrances. So these are seven that outside of my channel, I don't think they get a whole lot of love. So there's a thing about fragrances being hyped up in the online fragrance community. And I don't really watch as consume near as much fragrance content as I once did once upon a time. But I go based off of you guys, the feedback from you guys. What are you guys wearing? What have you guys been reaching for? What do you guys post about for those of you that post on social media? And I got to say, for my money, these are underappreciated. Some are niche, some are affordable designers, some straight up cheapies. We got, we got a, a little bit of variety here of some personal favorites of mine that I think deserve hype, but get none. So we're going to talk about them and try to give them a little bit of hype. Stay tuned. Starting with one that's so underappreciated, I, I I need to go back to reaching for it again myself. I was I had you know a nice little love affair going on earlier in the year with this one. It's from Salvatore Ferragamo. This is Ferragamo Bright Leather. So seems like spicy leather has been getting all the love. I see people post about intense leather, which I agree is good. The original is phenomenal. The original doesn't get any love, but this it has like a an Italian leather beige leather type of smell. I don't know how many of you have been inside a brand new on the showroom floor S class with the Napa leather upgrade on the interior. That's the kind of leather I think of that luxurious high end Italian leather cut. Beige blonde leathers, a little bit of freshness. There's some citrus. It's got a bit of a, an ozonic freshness to it. Great atomizer. Such a good one. A little bit of a fresh spicy accord, but I wouldn't call it a very spicy fragrance. This is some good stuff, guys. Gets no love. This is a sneaky good fragrance that's actually pretty damn unique. I don't have anything else that smells like Ferragamo Bright Leather. It's quite enjoyable, masculine, soft, and not aggressive or abrasive. But when I say soft, I don't mean weak. I just mean it's not rough around the edges. It's as smooth as you would expect for something that's supposed to replicate and represent blonde leather. A very beautiful, soft leather. I mean, guys, <laughs> this is absolutely worth trying. Um, outside of me, I don't know who else shows this thing any love, but it's one that I would encourage you to get a sample if you want something different. You want a fresh leather fragrance. If you're a fan of leather records in men's fragrances, it's the fresher side. There's not too many really good fresh leathers out there, but I'll tell you what, Ferragamo did a great job with Ferragamo bright leather. This next one is a new release from this year and I just don't see it getting any love. It's already at the rack stores. There's been a few people in my live stream live chats that have found this for $39 for 100 ml at Ross Dress for Less. So check your Ross Dress for Lesses. This is already a bona fide cheapie. It's a brand new release in a wonderful line and it's in my opinion the best one in the line. It is from Lacoste. This is L1212 Blanc. Oh intense. This is the newest one. So it does tie to the original L1212 White's DNA. You do have that floral leather feel, but instead of grapefruit, it's got a beautiful orange note, and that leather accord is intensified. It doesn't take away the freshness, but it does add a pretty rich density to the fragrance to where this is more of a three-season fragrance than the original even was, much more than the Eau de Parfum, way more than the Eau Intense. I mean, the, the Eau Fraiche, which I did wear a few days ago. This is a good fragrance, and it's crazy that it's already hitting the rack stores for a phenomenal price. I think 40 bucks for this fragrance is great. It's less than I paid for it. I didn't pay much more, but upper 40s I paid for this from Fragrance Buy, but that's a great deal for this fragrance, and it's one of the better designer releases of the year, in my opinion. It just gets no love. Like I said, in my opinion, it's the best one in the line because it pays homage to the original's DNA. You do smell the original, which... There was a stretch when that was a hype beast in the online fragrance community a few years back. And it just, it kind of elevates the scent profile, richens it, darkens it slightly, changes the citrus out to not really change the DNA, but just change that main accord at the top. Your citric accord is swapped out a little bit. And it, the performance is really good on this one. This one's a six to seven hour fragrance, which 
for what it is, that's actually really good performance on my skin. Some people make it more, some people make it less, but this deserves some spotlight. And I don't really see it getting any love. And I personally think it's one of the better releases of the year. So if you haven't got your nose on this yet, you really should. But check your raw stress for less. I'll have a link down below where you can get it for a similar price. And that's Lacoste L1212 Blanc. Oh, intense. With this next one, I'm starting to think outside of myself and my man EQ from the channel of Quality Fragrances. I don't think it gets any love. And I think it's one of the best fresh fragrances Mancera has ever released. It is French Riviera. Some of you are very familiar with me talking about this fragrance and probably familiar with EQ talking about this fragrance. It's a soft, creamy white floral, slightly powdery, watery citrus, very breezy, airy, laid back vibe type of scent. Has a little touch of sunscreen feel. This is a coastal type of, I mean, French Riviera is the name. Look at the color scheme. It's a very much a vacation, casual, yacht fragrance, boat fragrance, hanging out on the coast at the marina, beachside, any of these scenarios, that casual, you know, carefree lifestyle. That's the type of scent profile this is. It's beautiful for a lackadaisical type of day. This is the fragrance to reach for. It's a solid performer, around eight hours of longevity. Not going to overwhelm anybody in projection, but it is solid for about two hours of consistent, you know, roughly arms reach type of stuff. People will smell you. It's not super abrasive or anything. It's very smooth. It's not too powdery and it's not too creamy. There's a nice balance of, harm of harmony between the two accords from this tire flower that's in here. Like I said, citruses, watery and aquatic without being salty, creamy floral with a touch of powder, a nice musk woody tone as it dries where it's not too musky and also not too woody. Like I said, harmonious flow between these notes and accords as you would expect with something that gives off a very laid back, casual, carefree type of vibe. This is good stuff. This deserves so much more love than it gets outside of just myself and my man EQ. This is Mancera. French Riviera. This next one's another kind of under, not so much under the radar for this year, like the Lacoste fragrance we talked about, but it is a release for this year that is right around 50 bucks that you can get from discounters. I picked it up. It's it's one of the better, better fresh vetiver fragrances I've ever smelled. It's Issy Miyake Lo Dissi Por Homme Vetiver. It's like the color scheme indicates, it's a very watery, fresh, Woody vetiver. It's a slightly earthy vetiver. It's not real dirty and smoky. It's a little bit of a dark smoky nuance, but fresh overall has this freshwater accord. A little bit of geranium adds a touch of sweetness, but really livens up and freshens this thing up. It's not some citrus dominant bomb to add this wateriness or freshness to it. The way it's composed is simplistic, yet slightly different. I really, really love this fragrance. I just think it's one of the best releases of the year as far as designers, and I think because it's so easygoing and versatile, that might be why it's not getting a ton of love, because it's not just some mind-blowing, you know, storytelling work of art. It's just a great, everyday, fresh, woody fragrance, watery and woody, that anybody, any age can wear for any situation. You're just going to smell good. Decent performer, six to eight hour range in longevity. It's kind of about more so in the six hour range on my skin, but really, really good stuff. They all, they release so many low dissy flankers. It's easy for some of them to get lost in the shuffle. I totally understand why that only from time to time will you see one get a lot of hype, but this one deserves a lot more outside of me. This is some good stuff. If you like fresh vetiver, this is one of the better ones I think I've ever smelled. Again, that's Issy Miyake, Lo Dissi Por Homme Vetiver. This next one's a personal favorite of mine. This was my introduction into this niche house, and I continue to just fall in love with it more with every spray. It's from Paradis de Sins. This is called Eden. So Eden has a beautiful fresh citrus, a lot of grapefruit, but it really starts to settle into this fresh green, leafy, ivy type of smell. Fresh and green, very woodsy. There's woody notes, but I think the ivy note adds a little bit of this green woody nuance. Very fresh, not really spicy. Uh, there is a little bit of a floral soft feel to it, though I don't even recall florals being in the note, but it has this soft floral tone to it as it settles in. Super versatile, perfectly unisex. It's smooth, another one that's not abrasive at all. This is such a treat to the senses for me personally. Another one that's a very laid back vibe, but I really think you can get through your day doing just about anything with this fragrance. I don't think there's a bad situation for it. 
and this one I think is super hype worthy. I now have two fragrances from this brand and they continue to impress because Bliss is a beautiful fruity leather fragrance as well. More of a woodsy leathery fragrance whereas this is a fresh green citrus woody fragrance that for some reason on the internet I've seen people compare it to Elysium. I kind of get the grapefruit. I understand that part of it. But the majority of it overall, it's a bit different. And the main reason being, this isn't metallic in any way, shape, or form. It's not real fruity. And it's the star of the show is this ivy leaf with the woody note. This is just such a good fragrance. I've encouraged you guys many times. I don't know how many of you watching this have heard me talk about this before. Some of you have for sure. Because I've been back and forth. I'm trying to really raise awareness to this fragrance because this deserves hype in my opinion. If nothing else, get a sample and try it. I'm not saying blind, blind buy a bottle, but I am saying get a sample and try this because it is a beautiful everyday fragrance that in my opinion doesn't smell like everything else. It's Parody Descends Eden. So it's not always easy to find Le Bolo Parfum. Now this doesn't have the richness of Le Bolo Parfum, but it has the scent profile because it's an eau de toilette. It's my first Mandarina Duck fragrance. It's Mandarina Duck Vita Loca for him. A straight up $34, $35 cheaping, average performance, nothing crazy, that has that beautiful beachy sweet tropical smell of Le Beau Le Parfum, which is pretty much my favorite Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrance at this point. It has, instead of bergamot, you have a mandarin orange note. So you swap out the citrus, you still have the pineapple coconut combo, and you swap out sage and mint for the cypress that's found in Le Beau Le Parfum. So still has the, uh, the soapy floral smell, the sweet powdery tonka bean, the light woody note, your fresh green, sage and mint. Your citrus is orange instead of bergamot. You have your fruity pineapple and your sweet coconut smell. It gives a little bit of a sunscreen vibe. It's Like I said, it's like 90% the same fragrance. Average performance, not quite as, as good in performance, but for 34 bucks, this is, oh, we're spraying that again. Give me all the whiffs. This is so, so good. I really enjoy this. I keep going back to it. It's one that, you know, regulars on the channel would have seen me talk about a few times here in the last couple weeks since I got it. I've worn it to the beach. I've worn it casually. I've worn it to lunch. I really, really dig this one. I've even worn it out the shower. Uh, I've pretty much worn it in most situations that I have in my day-to-day -day life, and I just can't stop saying enough good things about it. And it just flying under the radar as far as I can tell, so... Definitely underhyped and deserves some more is Mandarina Duck Vita Loca for him. Last but most certainly not least, I think I am every bit of love this fragrance has ever gotten online. It's the most mature and masculine of the fragrances we're talking about here today. It's the most impressive cap, and it's the highest quality aside from the Parody Descends fragrance. I would even it's, I think it's even higher quality than the Mancera, to be honest with you. It's from Jacques Foth. This is Verlasu. Some of you have heard me praise this fragrance. This is, think fragrances like your Dior Eau Sauvages, your Zerjoff Fiero, Raja Parfum Scandal. It doesn't smell exactly like those, but it has that spicy green lemon citrus type of smell. There's a little bit of a peppery nuance. There's some florals. There's some woods. There's some musk. There's even Ambroxan in here. There's a lot of notes. It's a very complex breakdown. Oh, man, is it good. Timeless style. And an incredible, incredible magnetic cap. I mean, that's a serious cap, too. I paid $41 for this 50 ml from Fragrance by a while, a while back. These Jacques Foth fragrances, man, I know I'm super late to the party, but I continue to be impressed by them. And my favorite of the four bottles that I have is definitely this one. Actually, I have five bottles now because I have Bel Am, Bel Ambre, but... This is still my favorite. It's the most versatile. It, it can dress up very well. It's a very professional scent profile. The quality is great. The lemon's juicy and rich with the, the other citruses that are here, but it's very much a lemon smell to me. Uh, like I said, with spicy greens. I love that. Very much a timeless citrus aromatic with a lot of fougere qualities to the scent profile and the composition. Just, It's great. Performs great. It's just great. I can't say anything more than that. The word great sums up my feelings about this fragrance. And like I said, as far as I know, I am the hype. I am it. It's, it's, I could be wrong, but like I said before, I don't consume near the content that I did many moons ago. So I'm not saying I'm the only one talking about it, but as far as I know, the buck pretty much stops with me on this one. So let there be hype. <laughs>
because it deserves it, in my opinion. This is some good stuff. Jacques Foth, Verlesu. Well, that's the seven that I have for you today. These underhyped, underappreciated, deserve more hype fragrances, in my opinion. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. Because I do appreciate all the feedback. And I love hearing from you guys. Of these seven, what have you tried? Are you familiar with any of them? What do you think about them if you are? I'll try to have links to everything down below for anybody that wants to check any of these out. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the seven that I featured in this video and you give them a spray now, you might end up thanking me later and then mission accomplished. We generated just a little bit of hype for some that really deserve it. Have a good one, guys.